Thanks, everybody, for coming to the talk. I'm Michael Dawson, going to talk about designing interactive fiction on episode in three phases. So I wanted to start out talking about what does it mean to design great interactive fiction that people love and to do it on this device. It means putting together two very distinct worlds. One world is, I think, well represented by Hollywood, which is really best on earth storytelling. The other world is mobile, which is both the largest games platform on earth right now, as well as maybe the largest platform overall that we have to work on. So today I really want to walk through what are the parts we on episode have taken from both of these worlds to put together hit interactive fiction. So this is way of background on kind of me and episode for those of you that might not have it. Um, I'm Michael Dawson. I lead the studio at episode, um, which was created by Pocket Gems in 2014. It was created by seeing this real opportunity on mobile to say, what does it mean to tell a story on a mobile device? Um, so we've launched, since we've launched, we opened up our tool set. We have over um, five and a half million creators using our tool set today. We also have an internal team that's kind of working on episode originals that use that tool set as well. We've launched over 50,000 stories, um, including both these great things created by our user community, um, as well as things we created internally, like Mean Girls, Demi Lovato, and Pretty Little Liars. Um, all of which have seen over 3 billion episodes viewed, which is like 57,000 years or so um, spent watching it. So I give this only as background just to say, this is kind of, I want to give this talk to talk about what we've learned as we've done all of this. And I want to talk about how it works for us in three phases. So the first phase is really creating a great story. And because episodes on mobile, I'm going to talk about creating a great story that works on mobile. The second phase is then you've created that great story. How do you iterate on it with your internal team to make sure that it goes from a great story idea and concept and outline to a fully fleshed out great story? And then the third phase, and kind of anyone here who kind of has built mobile games and launched and iterated them knows this, but how do you iterate on it with viewers in advance of its worldwide launch? So let's dive in first to this first phase of creating a great story that works on mobile. The place you start, this is for episode, I think for anyone, is really knowing and understanding your audience. And so for episode, our audience is women who are 13 to 25 on mobile. And this audience is interesting. This is truly a mobile-only audience, not even a mobile-first audience. So some of the stats we found when we talked to people, 14% of our audience use their phone for 12 hours a day or more. 11% check their phone when they're in the shower. 12%, especially those 13 to 17, check their phone every few seconds when we ask them, how often do you check your device? So this is very different than Hollywood. Hollywood does not design for this audience. They design for an audience that, can, that goes into the movie theater, that sits in front of a TV for long interrupted time, not an audience where there are native things built for the mobile device. It's much closer to gaming. I think another part of this audience, and this is great for all of us gamers, is they want to be active participants. That's what they've grown up doing. That's what they've always known. They've grown up with social media. They've grown up with smartphones. They've grown up be getting to be the center of their stories. But for them, these stories are like, what do they have for lunch? What are their friends doing? These stories aren't the great sort of Hollywood caliber stories. So the question is, how do we take those great stories, those great caliber stories, but weave in thoughtfully the interactive elements that are so natural to gamers? How do we make sure that the audience is at the center of that story? How do we give them agency as they read the story? Um, and how do we design it then to fit inside mobile and in how we're doing this? So the last thing about mobile is episodes audience, but mobile audience in general wants bite-sized stories. So there are two parts of this. So one part is for all of us who have mobile phones. Our mobile phone is something we use when we're in line at Starbucks, when we're on the bus, when we're kind of walking, when we have these small bite-sized increments. Um, so I think that's true in general, but then episode audience, there's a second layer to this. If it's an audience, if you guys all use Snapchat or you've seen, if anyone's seen someone who's 13 to 17 use Snapchat and the pace at which they do it and the attention span that's associated, it is even shorter. 10 seconds is way too long. A three to seven second video is the right length of time for short form content. So thinking of these two factors, both mobile to begin with and then this mobile only audience together, we said the right for long form storytelling, it's no longer the 129 minute feature film. It's not even the 22 minute sitcom or 44 minute drama. It's a five minute episode length is the right long form story length. So 
it, this is a giant move away from what is normal in Hollywood in typical formats. It's more like kind of session times normal to mobile games, but instead of it being a single compact session, is how do you tell a long form story episodically, still by doing this bite sized way? That's kind of the audience overview. So now the question is how do you pick a concept this audience will love? Well, here's a place where Hollywood's pretty great at picking concepts. They have a lot of things that they do. They take an, a genre the audience loves and do a really original take on it. So you can think of like what Amy Schumer's done recently to the romance comedy. Um, they find exceptional creators, exceptional writers, and have them make something. So James Cameron, Steven Spielberg stand out in this dimension, but there are lots of others where you really trust in a creator. Um, they also can license a great story that was started in another medium. So Harry Potter and Twilight both started as books before they came to Hollywood. So I think these are all great things to start, but there are ways that um, you can, if you have kind of a platform of mobile, you can augment this in ways that Hollywood can't really or can't very easily. So one thing we did when we were deciding which partners in the, this licensing group, who to partner with, is we just asked our audience. We're like, what do you like? What TV shows do you like? What movies do you like? What stars do you like? And they answered. They told us Pretty Little Liars. They told us Mean Girls. They told us Demi Lovato, among a set of others. So we went out and partnered with them. And it's been great. We've had a really wonderful response. We didn't have to guess. We just had to ask. I think a second thing is because we have people searching through our 50,000 stories, we can look at what they're searching for. And it's maybe not that unexpected, but at the same time, it can really zero you in and help you focus. Um, so, you know, twi this audience loved Twilight a decade ago. Doesn't it make sense? Vampires and werewolves were high up on here today still. There's love on here, whether summer or otherwise. There are crushes. There's even cheating. Um, there's a lot about babies and pregnancy. They talk about princess, princesses here and royalty. So that informed some story ideas. And so one story that came out of this for us was one we called The Royal Baby. The Royal Baby is a story where you meet a guy, you end up with him, you end up getting pregnant, turns out he's a prince. It's amazing. Um, with this, it also, this was like, because we had all this data, but then we could also look at what was happening in the news. And you saw Prince William and Kate, they just had their first two kids, it was really on people's minds. So we can take sort of, again, take that Hollywood approach, take those normal things, but add this data element to it to really feel like we're honing in. And, I'll talk more about it later, but The Royal Baby is one of our best performing stories to date that we've created that was entirely original. So you get this great concept. Then the next step to creating a story is really use those best practices of Hollywood screenwriting. This, you know, if you've read Save the Cat, if you've read Story by Robert McKee, these books really lay that out. They go through kind of great three-act story structure. They go through kind of pacing dialogue, like all the good things of storytelling, because there's a true craft to doing storytelling well. And I think that applies independent of the medium. The other piece that we've taken a lot for episode, because it's episodic, is from the TV world, the idea of a writer's room. So the idea of you have a set of writers and creative people in a room working to break down the story together and come out of it with an outline that captures every story beat, scene, um, within that act structure. And we found that as a really great thing. But you can't just take the Hollywood screenwriting process, apply it exactly, because mobile's different. So how's it different? So the first is pacing of your story on mobile. So in the first five minutes of movie, they do setup. In movie, to get through the first act, it's like 15 to 20 minutes. In books, it's 60 to 70 pages, if we're talking about a novel. On episode, the first episode, we tend to get through the entire first act. And if you don't do that, it will feel too slow. So let me tell you two stories. So one, um, one of the stories we did was Mean Girls uh, Sorority Rush. It was a follow-up to our Mean Girls senior year, which is a follow-up to the Tina Fey movie Mean Girls. So the first version of that, the whole first episode was you arriving at school. And anyone that's seen the movie Pitch Perfect, that's basically the first five minutes of Pitch Perfect. So you're arriving to school, it's fun, it's enjoyable, the pacing feels right for a movie. We did that, it felt way too slow. It just, it was like you were bored as we were playing through this thing we'd created. So we had to speed it up and we jammed kind of that into the, you know, the first couple taps and then went on into the inciting incident and the rest of the first act. Another example is we had a writer that we brought in and brought onto our team who spent a lot of time in the soap world. And he, the first day in a writer's room, outlined the first four episodes of a story. And the next day he came back in and the team, they looked at it and they're like, mm, that's episode one. That is not the first four episodes, that is episode one. So I think really making sure that that pacing is mobile, mobile length is important. 
The second thing is thinking about the mobile device and what is the native format of mobile. So if you think of iMessage, you think of Snapchat, you think of Instagram, you think of your email, it is portrait. That is the native format of mobile. I think that is not the native format of Hollywood. It is landscape. But I think for mobile, designing in that native format feels better, it feels more natural, and it's the one we have very much stuck with. I think assuming you take that step for kind of interactive fiction you put on mobile, you need to really think about how screen real estate works. It's really hard to have a ton of characters on screen at once in a portrait mode. It's better for close-up shots, fewer characters. So if I think of like, if we were gonna tell Lord of the Rings on episode, we would tell Frodo's story more than we do the 10,000 person battle. I think the last piece that's really different from Hollywood is you have to build interactivity in from day one. So in the Hollywood world, you, can, you create a linear story. There's no way for the audience to interact with the movie screen in a theater. They're, with TV shows, maybe that will come soon, but it's not there yet. Um, you know, VR, it will certainly come, but again, not yet. So I think this is a change to the process. And it's thinking as you're breaking that story, as you're in the writer's room, as you're putting together that story outline, what are going to be these um, moments of great interactivity, these moments of choice, these moments of branching? So we found that we want to think about it then, but the other thing we found we have to do is add a couple days onto our writer's rooms to have specifically focused on choice and interactivity. Um, and to really flesh that out to make sure that we're building that into the core of what the story is instead of band-aiding interactivity on after the fact. Um, as an example, when we were working on Pretty Little Liars, we had this idea, there's a moment in the story where you're at a party, there's a photo booth at the party, a photo pops out, and you have this really tough decision. Are you gonna protect the four liars? Are you gonna protect Spencer and Hannah and Aria? Or are you gonna protect yourself and your family? And we knew this would be one of those weighty, wonderful decisions where it's a true choice that has agency, one where 50% she's one, 50% she's the other, but we designed it from the beginning and then could write the whole episode with that in mind. So, after you finish this process, hopefully what you come out of is a great story, and by that I mean you have an outline of a story with interactivity built in that's thought of for the pacing of the device. Now, to iterate internally, the first thing you have to do is write scripts, but I think the key is go as fast as you can to get that script onto device. So much changes, I think, and especially until you have lots and lots of cycles writing the script for device, which we certainly don't yet at episode. So, we, and we learned this the hard way by making some mistakes. So we had one story we did internally called Bad Boys Girl. It was a story where we spent six weeks on the script, we got it really right, we kept tuning the language, tuning the dialogue, making the romance feel great, making the plot move forward. And then we put it on a device and it just didn't work. People were bored. It was not fun to tap through. And had we done that sooner, so we had to go rewrite and blow up the whole story and work over it. I think a second one this happened our first season of Mean Girls, Mean Girls senior year. So with that, we partnered with Kiwi Smith. She's awesome. She co-wrote Legally Blonde and 10 Things I Hate About You. She's like great at writing romance comedies, and she knows how movie scripts translate to movie screens. So we got that script. It was hilarious. We were laughing out loud. We thought it was so funny. It was like, we thought maybe we're funnier than Tina Fey. Then we put it on the app, and everyone was so depressed because it was not funny anymore. The comic timing just didn't translate in the way people expected. So had we spent less time perfecting everything in the script form, getting it to device sooner, and making it a playable, we would have learned that. And I think key to being able to do that quickly is having tools to get to a playable fast. So we built a tool set. You know, we released them. Anyone here can use them if you like. Um, but some of the key things to that tool set is having a library of art that's there that you can just grab. So you don't have to wait on all of the custom art for your story. You can put art from your library in there. I think the second thing is the tool set should really be usable by anyone, or essentially anyone. It shouldn't require animators plus artists plus engineers to get your story to be playable. Then once you have this playable story, the question is, how do you do story feedback? So we think of it in four phases. First of all, there's a core group. And this core group needs to be able to cover the key elements of the story while understanding the genre you're in. And so things of that, like for us, story structure is a key thing and the fundamentals of kind of how the outline works in that. Romance for, for a lot of our stories is a key element, so really being honed to that and how to make a romance feel real and great and wonderful. Interactivity and choice, people with narrative design backgrounds are great at that voice and dialogue and kind of getting that right and connecting with your audience and as well as visual storytelling and really understand not just is how are the words doing it telling the story but how are all the non-word elements doing of telling that story so we get feedback from that group but then they've seen the thing a bunch so we want a few people that really understand story they're outside of that group that can be fresh eyes 
then going to a broader group, often including people that kind of understand metrics better and tuning and those things that can give very specific feedback on the story, but maybe aren't people with creative story backgrounds. And then finally, we'd love to show it to the whole team. And we can't, at this point for us, we can't do that with all of our stories. We like to pick a few and show it. And we get amazing feedback, even from people who aren't from the demographic, who don't love the genre, but they still can be really thoughtful. And the questions to ask as you're going through this is, most importantly, on mobile, is does it keep you engaged? At every tap, does it keep you engaged? Is the story moving fast enough? Does it have the right amount of agency that it gives to the readers? Is the dialogue working? And fundamentally, is it fun? And is it connecting with you emotionally? So from there, we do the third phase. We want to then go and iterate with our viewers. And for this, this is very much what we've always done as a mobile games company, a Pocket Gems, is really think about how can we soft launch something? How can we collect data and user feedback? How can we then go iterate on the story and continue repeating the cycle until we believe in the thing that we're launching? And then we can get it to worldwide launch. So how do we iterate? So the first thing we look at is the overall rating. So for anyone that's put games out on mobile, this is the equivalent of Google Play or iTunes rating that you get from your users. It's a pretty blunt thing. It tells you, like, do people like it or not? How much do they like it? And eventually, you can start having relative comparison points. This is really good to say, you know, am I on track to have a hit? Is my concept a hit? Is the overall story a hit? Is my execution in general going in the right direction? And it can help you decide which things to invest in overall, but it can't really tell you what to do to iterate. So that's the next set of things. So a first is story starts. Um, so this is combined with things you can control and things you can. So a set of things you can control, you can control the title, you can control the description, you can control any visual images. We call them story cards inside episode. Um, and so for that, we've learned some things. So we've learned that being closer on faces is really good, like you see on the Truggable Maker image on the right, because it can show more emotion and capture that. Um, we've learned for our audience, like you see in Bad Boys Girl, kind of love, love triangles are really exciting, and ones with two guys tend to do better than ones with two girls, turns out. Um, but you can tune all these. You can tune the description. You can tune the title to make it really exciting. There's an, you also have to understand where are you showing it. In other words, like in an episode, if we put it as the very top card, it'll get far more initial starts and far more people coming in. If it's a licensed property that people already know really well, it'll get more starts. So I think that there are things that you have to understand to calibrate. But then the final thing you can't control is, is the thing absolutely a hit or not? And I think that, that in the end will determine how many story starts you get, but these are all things you can tune to help give you a better chance. Then it's what do we iterate on inside the story? So we look at what is the retention of each episode? And we can also instrument scene story beats. So you can go all the way down and see where are people kind of playing, where are they not playing, where are they falling off? What we found is this is really useful, interesting data, but it doesn't tell you what to do. It only tells you where there's a problem. So in that first season of Mean Girls Sorority Rush, when we were working with Kiwi, we put it out. And we thought, because in episode five, you're competing, for any of you who remember Mean Girls, you're competing in this version with Regina George to win student body president. And the election, the results come in in episode five. So we thought that'd pull people along. Turned out, no, not enough. Not enough happened between episode one and five to get people there. We had to have something really fun happen in episode three. And Kiwi then had this great idea. She's like, what if there were a party? And what if Glyn Coco threw that party? And what if you had all these like highs and lows of a high school party and all the fun things? And it was great. It utterly fixed it. But unless we had this data, we wouldn't have known to go figure out a way to solve that retention issue in episode three. Um, and this connects. This is just like if you think of kind of retention in games. But for us, we broke it down to how do we do it within the story itself. The next thing is choices. And so for the choices themselves, to make sure the player feels agency, to make sure the choice is great, the key thing about them is you want people choosing both sides equally. If 90% of people pick one side of the choice and 10% the other, that wasn't a meaningful, hard choice. It felt like there was a right answer versus this was a choice where you got to shape this story and where you got to define yourself as a character. And that's another thing that you can track and look at. We also look at dollars earned per story start as a way to think about monetization. Um, in large part because we want to make sure that we can kind of know the stories that people love and decide where to invest more over time. Um, there's a pretty big range in what we find here, and we find that we can actually move this quite a bit. Um, the primary way that we move this is by adding premium branches and premium choices. 
So when I talk about those, um, we found that we can do strong work to optimize them. So here, I don't know if you guys can read this that well, um, but what we started with was one where kind of you're saying, hey, I want to put on a new outfit. You're going to go meet a guy that you're into, but you're like, I want to put on a new outfit. We give you a single choice for the outfit. Then you put it, you try it on or not, and you're like, okay, now I'm going to go meet the guy. So it was a good choice that did all right. We found with working with the, the setup, the choice, and the result, we were able to increase it almost 100% in conversion. Um, so with the setup, we found that we really wanted to create good, like stronger self-encouragement to say, hey, if I put on this outfit, he's going to love it. I think then for the choice itself, we found if we gave people two options, they liked that better. Um, and we simplified the language around what those options felt like. And then in the result, we found that if we really emphasize the payoff of making that choice, it helped people feel really good about it and encourage them to make future choices like this. I think separately in Pretty Little Liars, we had this moment where we thought at the beginning it was going to have great choices if you could help the four liars in their lives. And you would pay to help Arya, you'd pay to help Spencer, you'd pay to help Hannah. Um, what we found is that didn't work. It turned out that the choices that worked better were things that about yourself and your own life and kind of whether it was the romance you were interested in or other things that tended to work better within that world. And we were able to really move up the engagement with those choices. So this is kind of, we stay in this process until we get to something great, then we push it out to worldwide launch. And that moment of launch is the moment where you learn, did you, you actually have a hit on your hands or not? You don't really know for sure up front, but there's so much you can do to give yourself a better chance along the way. But for us, that's not the end. So the step what we've been taking now and kind of we're just in the process of is thinking about how can we support agency and identity across stories, not just within the individual story. So, because in a lot of our stories, you get to pick an avatar, create a character, but it's locked inside the world of that story. So, we're launching profiles where you can create a profile, you can have an avatar for that, and the, the idea is over time for that avatar to be able to be the, the avatar you use through the different and distinct stories, so that it better sets you up to feel, feel this identity that persists across episode and across the world of that, and really takes that to a next level. So to kind of summarize, I think everything starts with understanding your audience and picking a concept that that audience is going to love. I think then you need to embrace your medium's pacing, its native design formats, its interactivity formats, while at the same time taking those best practices from Hollywood screenwriting and keeping those in mind. You then want to go from a script to a build on your device uh, as soon as possible because it's really the translation can, is, can be quite tricky and unexpected. From there, you want to establish the right internal review loops because you want to feel good about what you put out, but then you want to pilot to gather data and feedback. And honestly, we've never felt like we put something out too soon to pilot. We've often felt like we waited too long, spent too much time internally, but I think the sooner you put it out, the better. And then you want to iterate. And in this iteration, don't be afraid to blow up your story. I think that's the biggest thing. Nothing about that story should feel sacred. It should feel like all you're trying to do is make something really great and wonderful that people love. And if it's not working, change it, try again. It will get there eventually. So thanks very much. Um, love to take any questions if anyone has any. Hi. Oh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just had a question more about um, how uh, did you come up just by making games and episode games? How how the studio was born, episode? Sure. So in terms of how episode was born, we when we started Pocket Gems, it was always with the thought of we're a mobile entertainment company, not purely a games company. And in entertainment, storytelling's the half trillion dollar a year market. Games is, you know, the tiny market of only 150 billion. So we'd always thought of what is native storytelling on mobile, but by storytelling, we met this long form Hollywood storytelling. So we prototyped for a couple of years. We launched a first version in 2014 with kind of a pretty small team, and it just it worked and it fit. So we've been investing more and more in it ever since. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, fantastic talk.
Thanks. Uh, quick question in terms of monetization. Mm -hmm. uh, you, your stories are five minutes. How many of those uh, episodes uh, would, would a player um, be able to do for a dollar? And how did you guys go about that process of figuring out the, the sweet spot for um, how many passes or stories a person can do for, for when, they, when they spend? Sure, so thinking about what's the kind of sweet spot for a story. So yeah. for us, the, um, our s episodes are five minutes. Our stories might last multiple episodes the same way TV seasons do. So they're usually at minimum 12 episodes. Um, but can go on. We have some of our user stories that are now over 100 episodes. Um, in terms of that, we don't actually charge for the episodes. Um, we tar have kind of in-app purchases within them, and then we also have a pass system that kind of, the longer you've been in the app, the more free passes you get every four hours, but they continue to refill. Um, in terms of figuring out the sweet spot, a lot of A-B testing, I guess, <laughs> is the answer for the pass system. Um, but then also for the, with the story length itself, it, it depends partially on the story. Mm. It, I don't think we know exactly what the, the optimal length is. We haven't sort of so clearly fit it the way TV has its like 22 and 44 minute lengths. Great, thank you. Sure. Hello, very nice talk. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you choose which uh, choices uh, should be the ones that are monetizable? Uh, to, with choices to monetize. And a second question, what you, once you made that decision, uh, did you A-B test those uh, choices? So could you say the second part again? Once you made the decision, okay, I want to um, monetize this choice, did you do an A-B test on those choices? Sure. Um, it's not, there's not a science to it exactly, but we look at choices or branches that feel really meaningful and that will give some uh, viewer something that feels like really meaningful value. Because if they pay for something, we want them to feel great that they got something of real value. So either the branch has to be big enough or it might give them an outfit they wouldn't have otherwise got. So that's kind of the, the main criterion. Is our viewer gonna feel good about having made that choice and done it? Um, and then yeah, we test, we test each one and we can kind of look at the performance of the choice. Okay, thank you. Sure. How much ongoing development uh, are you investing in like the core of an episode, right? You have uh, dialogue choice mechanics, like items and outfits, et cetera, like all the animation stuff. Like, are you still actively developing and adding to that tool set for the authors or is it, does it feel kind of like done right now? Definitely not done. So our tool, we're investing very much in the tool set and want to continue putting out new and great ways for people to tell stories and surprise and delight their viewers. Is there any like sort of preview of what feel like that you could, I don't know, I'm just interested in what feels missing or like what's the next biggest bang for your development buck? Sure, I think a couple of things that are coming right now. So we launched Pretty Little Liars in December with an entirely new art and animation style. Mm. I think it's more realistic, more subtle. We're working to put that out to our whole community. Um, we're going to put weather effects out right now. We have a kind of first version of that. So those are a couple of things on the roadmap. Cool. Thanks. I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on uh, your studio's experience mixing mini games with interactive fiction. Sure. So experience mixing mini games with interactive fiction. Um, we haven't really done that that much. Um, as the answer. So we have choices in there, but we very much tried to say, how can episode be an alternative to TV for a generation who's mobile only and used to being an active participant in their entertainment, more than we've thought, how can we mix interactive storytelling with kind of games okay. in Thank that you. sense? So philosophically, we've just taken a slightly different path. Thanks. Hey, great content and uh, super impressive concept just overall. Well Thanks. done. Um, how did you guys determine your target audience to begin with? Sure. No, I think it's a great question how we determine the target audience. And it's to, to some degree it was thoughtful and some degree it's chance. Um, I think the chance piece came of we in our casual studio in the early days at Pocket Champs had created a game Campus Life. Um, and it had a great art set and it had a, our paper doll engine that allowed kind of animated interactive characters that you could change outfits on. So we could just take that art set and it was a, in, in then pilot episode and that focused on this audience. I think some of the more, the more thoughtful parts of it is, is an audience that feels pretty underserved. Um, and it's an audience that seems like storytelling quite a bit. Um, and, so for, and it's an audience where the kind of stories they like are tellable in a mobile format quite well versus say like a superhero story that would be much harder to tell in a platform-based way. Do you see any opportunities for uh, 
extending the platform to boys? I think we do um, over time, for sure. We'd love to be a platform that hits all four quadrants. Um, but uh, kind of right now, we're focused on just putting out great stories for the current audience and growing organically. All right, thanks. Hi there. Hey there. <laughs> One person Sorry. on this side. Um, I'm curious about um, incidences of long-term choice and how your audience feels about them. It seems that since they like things in a bite-sized form, do they get frustrated when there's a longer term choice where maybe they decided, okay, that thing, choice I made a long time ago, maybe I shouldn't have made? I think that's an interesting question, but do they get frustrated with long term choice? I think it very much depends. It's, let me see. They wanted every moment be emotionally connected to that story. So if the long term choice is helping them stay connected to the story and feeling good, I think that's what matters more than whether the choice is short term or long term. I think the other pieces, all, the best choices are the ones that feel really, really meaningful. And again, it matters less if they're short or long term. It's just, are you connecting deeply and emotionally with your audience at each moment? Excellent. Thank you. That was fantastic. Thanks. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Really great to talk to you.